It's time for round 2 of our Pikmin analysis. Hot off the heels of the Pikmin 1 and 2 remasters on Nintendo Switch, we have a completely new series entry in Pikmin 4. And it's truly been a long time coming. A decade long wait in fact since the last actual mainline entry on Wii U. To show for that development time, Pikmin 4 does have the distinction of being a complete technical overhaul for the series. Gone is Nintendo's in-house engine, which served it well for the first three series entries, and in its place, Epic's Unreal Engine brings to life the vivid gardens of Pikmin 4. The result being some of the most striking visuals seen to date on Switch. So, just how much of a graphical leap is Pikmin 4 over what came before, specifically looking at the Wii U release of Pikmin 3? What new visual features are added to the game, and how does performance using the Unreal Engine hold up here? Let's find out. In almost every respect, Pikmin 4 is the biggest overhaul to the series so far. Not just for its jump to the Unreal Engine, though obviously that's a huge point, but also in its mechanics, its retooled UI, and myriad quality of life improvements. For a start, the targeting reticle now has a lock-on feature. We also now have an option to rewind the gameplay should all your Pikmin perish, and to add an extra dimension to the series' combat, resource gathering, and even puzzles, Pikmin 4 also introduces Oachi, a dog-like sidekick. Yes, we have the usual 100 Pikmin at our command, and all of these ant-like creatures still do your bidding to salvage treasures from the garden, or attack enemies, but Oachi gives the player more options. I mean, by default you get a jump, a means to swim, and even a charging move to smash through obstacles. In short, if you've never played a Pikmin game before, there's really never been a better time to jump in. It's the most streamlined it's ever been. On the technical front, Pikmin 4 benefits hugely from the move to Unreal Engine. Of course, we've already seen Nintendo published games use Epic's middleware tech, notably Yoshi's Crafted World on Switch. And the fact is, while proprietary engines are something to cherish in this day and age, Unreal Engine does at least give developers a shortcut to top-end rendering features. With Unreal Engine, we get a whole host of legacy options, from a post-effects suite, shaders, to dynamic resolution scaling, and much more. And at its core, Pikmin 4 still feels like Pikmin. It has the same DNA, the same design ethos, but with a stark upgrade in its presentation. For perspective first then, let's look back at Pikmin 3 on Wii U. Now for its time, Pikmin 3 did a lot to upgrade the visuals over the two GameCube originals already. It made the jump to a native 720p resolution, moving to the HD era, albeit with no anti-aliasing. It improved materials across its miniature worlds with higher resolution textures, sharper, clearer assets to match the res bump. Model quality on the Pikmin, the enemies, and the pilots was boosted, it added a depth of field effect to the distance, and even added screen space reflections across water here. So, simply put, the game looked superb for a 2013 release on Wii U. Pikmin 3 was already in a great place then. Despite being developed for Nintendo Wii originally, it really ended up taking great advantage of the Wii U as an HD console, of the gamepad controls for an always-on map screen, and equally, in enhancing the ideas already in place with Pikmin 1 and 2. The rolling time of day cycle came to life, with more detailed shadows underfoot, we got more Pikmin types to play into the game's puzzles, and while the game did just run at 30 frames per second on Wii U, the fact is it was stable, for the most part anyway. The only real downside to Pikmin 3 then is the lack of any form of anti-aliasing whatsoever, something of a trend in Nintendo titles. The good news of course is that this third entry is already remastered on Switch if you'd like to revisit it alongside the first two GameCube originals. Jump forward 10 years then and Pikmin 4 on Switch is a clear upgrade in several respects. Firstly, there's the resolution point. While playing docked under a TV, we get a boost in resolution to a dynamic 900p. Now, this mostly rests at the 1440 x 810 mark while adventuring in outdoor areas, or approximately 75% scale of Switch's max 1080p output. 
For most of play though, 810p is really the most typical figure, though the engine does hit 900p at peak once you enter the less taxing sub-levels. And of course, we have portable play on Nintendo Switch, which adjusts the target resolution accordingly. Played on the go, Pikmin 4 runs at a dynamic 720p instead, however, Again, most typically in taxing overworld areas, it's rendering at a lower 1066 by 600 figure. Long story short, this is our first main point of difference from Pikmin 3. The move to Unreal Engine opens up Dynamic Resolution Scaling (DRS) as a way to adjust Switch's GPU load and, in theory, help lock down its target 30fps. And, as an added bonus, Nintendo makes use of anti-aliasing for the first time in the series history here. Remarkably, a luxury not even seen in the recent Pikmin 1 and 2 HD remasters on Switch. It's all good news so far then. We get a lot of benefits with the Unreal Engine, but it doesn't end there. Pikmin 4 pushes for a much improved depth of field effect for a start, adding a bokeh pattern to areas just out of focus. Chromatic aberration is also added to the screen's edges too, creating the effect of an older film lens. And yet, all is not perfect with Pikmin 4's image quality. Yes, the base native resolution is much higher than Pikmin 3's 720p, and yes, we do get a much more advanced rendering pipeline via Unreal Engine, certainly in terms of lighting and materials. The only real outstanding issue, and this might come as a nitpick, but the game still suffers from a degree of pixel shimmer, aliasing and visual noise. In part, this is the dynamic resolution setup adjusting the pixel structure on the fly, and so it's possible to literally see the pixels shift on the horizon, especially in big open areas like the Sun Speckled Terrace. Likewise, the new bokeh depth of field effect runs at a lower resolution to the main image, meaning aliasing is visible where a background element hits an in-focus foreground object. So again, Pikmin 4 is a big improvement over Pikmin 3's 720p picture, no doubt, but there are still obvious limits to Switch's end result. In comparison, of course, looking at the Pikmin model quality over the years, from the original right up to Pikmin 4, there's only so far Nintendo really needed to push the detail level up on its main star. Geometry detail is boosted, certainly, and lighting on their plasticine-like material also gets an overhaul here using Unreal. But the genius of the Pikmin design is in its simplicity, in being able to render them in their numbers and view them as a swarm from afar. So, the bigger upgrade over Pikmin 3 then is easily in world detail. From the opening tutorial around the house to its flourishing garden areas, Nintendo absolutely fills the Pikmin universe with beautiful touches. Right away we get new decorative elements like falling petals, plus a gentle volumetric effect, a fog on the horizon. And both combined, it adds a sense of weight and energy to the air, the space above the Pikmin feels alive, an aspect previous games were missing. Combined with the series' continued use of the rolling time of day system and dynamic shadows, there's a genuine sense of a lived-in garden environment. Needless to say, the lighting and geometry of Pikmin 4 are a huge step up too. A huge part of the joy in actually playing Pikmin is in uncovering treasures, ranging from scrap salvage to old gaming handhelds. And it's here many material types come into play, interplaying with Unreal Engine's lighting. So for example, on Uachi we have a fuzzier fur-like material which diffuses oncoming light. And meanwhile, the helmets, the spacesuits of the pilots, and even the shells of these insect-like enemies all have this glossy porcelain finish. We even get a convincing reflective sheen to scratch metals, while the plastics of this Game Boy Advance produce a softer light bounce. It's not just the objects and enemies though. The terrain types outdoors also stand out, with greatly boosted resolution textures for grass, rock and brick. From the mossy undergrowth of the opening garden, to the stonework in the sub-levels, it all reacts much more realistically. One extra nice touch in Pikmin 4 I've noticed, note the details beyond the garden. Even filtered by the bokeh depth of field, we see the house, the scrapped tires, and giant flower pots looming over in the distance. Again, all of this helps create the sense that Pikmin 4's action plays out within a miniature scale world. 
Last up is the point of performance. Not too much to dwell on here really. Simply put, the game runs at a locked 30 frames per second throughout whether you're playing docked or portable on Switch. There are some minor single frame dips however, small hiccups as you pan the camera quickly around the garden. Most likely these single frames are dropped at the point where the resolution needs to adjust. On the whole, it's not too intrusive, though it's a slight step back from the watertight 30fps lock we see in the other Pikmin games. As an aside here, Pikmin 4 also drops at points, momentarily, where transparent elements fill the screen. Otherwise though, at least so far, this is an absolutely rock solid experience at that 30fps line. The verdict on Pikmin 4 then. This is easily the biggest leap forward visually for the series and a surprise visual tour de force for Nintendo Switch. Parts of the game almost look like a CG animation in presentation, especially the lighting and character models. Both benefit from a simple but effective design. Other aspects though, especially the at times noisy image quality, do show the limits of Switch in pushing for a higher pixel count. But given all the features Switch is pushing, the dynamic time of day, much improved lighting, shadows, materials, high grade character models and even screen space reflections, it's inevitable that resolution would be the trade off. All of this amounts to Pikmin 4 ranking among the best looking first party Nintendo games on Switch. It gets so much right. Even anti-aliasing is included, and so, based on the results here, Nintendo and Unreal Engine is a pairing I hope we see much more often. But that's all from me today. If you did enjoy this analysis of Pikmin 4, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching. Thank you.